ask if I could demonstrate how to apply a snow effect to an image. So here we go. I'm going to try to do this relatively quickly so my computer and program don't crash on this old system. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is, as usual, duplicate my background layer and then go back to the background and lock it. Uh, <clears throat> so now I have a copy. I'm going to now create a new layer, a new raster layer, and say OK. I'm then going to go to my materials and pick medium gray, which you see here, and uh, my bucket tool, and fill that layer with medium gray. As you can see, don't worry, your image is still there if we just shut off the visibility of that gray layer. I have tutorials on several of the methods that we're using here today on layers and masks and things like that, uh, scripts. So uh, let's just plunge ahead. We're going to go to adjust on the top menu and go down to add remove noise, add noise. And uh, you can see that you can change the values. And we'll try something like uh, 67 here. Then go back up to add, adjust noise, go to blur, go to Gaussian blur, and <clears throat> see how that looks at 2. And then we're going to go to adjust brightness contrast and levels. And so you'll see a histogram up here in your dialog box that goes along with levels. And if it's not reset, uh, you can press the reset button and you'll see the black levels are pegged left, the white to the right, and midtones uh, where they belong, in the middle. But uh, we want to bring out uh, a background of black. And it's a bit of trial and error to find the right place to get your snow effect. And we want to bring the, the snowy part, the white part, out. So uh, I'm going to dial in some levels that I know work pretty well. I want to clip the whites somewhere around 155 and uh, the darks somewhere around here. And that gives a light snow effect. And you can play with this and get as much snow effect as you want. Uh, say OK. So here we have values essentially 135, 145, 155. Um, but we can actually type them in as well. So you can highlight your value, put in 155. 1.4.5, and then say OK. So now our layer looks black with snow on top of it, but if we change the normal blending mode to a screen blending mode, we now have snow. Ta-da! So this is just a first step. Uh, and I would rename my layer so I don't lose it by double clicking here or right clicking and rename this to mid snow. Or it could be far snow. But just remember that snow that's like on your mitten looks gigantic compared to the snow that's in the mid ground beyond the bird, you know, like in this field, or even finer snow is going to be out here and up here as we look out. And you could put in multiple, multiple layers of snow of different size to get a more realistic effect. I would also uh, want to erase this snow effect from here and put a heavier snow effect with a larger flake in front of him and make sure that the eyes are not covered. So uh, 
to do this, I'm going to shrink down our bird here for a sec, our whole picture, enlarge the canvas uh, area, the, the view, and I'm going to go to my layers and right click on this one that we just made and say duplicate. Then I'm going to go over to my pick tool. It handles appear on the picture but it's only going to affect the layer we're working on. Make sure you're working on this one. And you know what? I'm going to rename that right away. I'm going to call it uh, Near Snow. Because I want these flakes to be bigger. And so I'm on my pick tool. I've got my handles. And if I just drag this out, and I'm going to do it a little unequally so that uh, snow appears more random. Now when I go back in to look at my picture, I've got some big flakes and some little flakes. It's starting to look more real. Uh, I'm going to come back to my layers, go to that mid snow level. It warns me that I've got to reset my pick tool. I say OK. I'm going to go to that mid snow level, grab my eraser, and uh, make sure that where I want my viewers to be able to see only the large flakes, I erase the small flakes. So that's anything in the foreground, the near foreground here. And that'll start to give it a more realistic appearance because there's snow behind the bird multiplying the effect and there's snow in front of the bird, which is larger. Um, and so uh, now it looks more realistic, doesn't it? And I could uh, put a finer layer behind it. Uh, again, we could shrink down to get our canvas exposed. Duplicate. This is far snow. Go to my pick tool. And this time I pretty much want to go in the other direction and say, gee, you know, I want this snow to only be and the far background about where the mountains are. going to be smaller too. Because I'm going to bring down this top edge. And now I have yet another area of snow. I'm going to go back to my eraser, make it really soft. And make the size bigger. And just sweep it across. Like so. And that will give a softness to this last layer that we just put on that kind of matches the contours of the distance. And now when we look at this, we've got denser and denser snow in the background, light in the foreground, far more realistic. Uh, and again, make sure that it's not covering the bird in the far ground. So we have to take our eraser, make it smaller. And harder. And especially in the detail areas, we want to make sure that all the snow's off. You probably even in the near ground, you want your eyes to be clear. Um, but definitely get the far ground snow off the stump, anything that's in the near bird.
in the near uh, subject, right in the foreground, you want to have only the coarse snow. So that's looking pretty good. I'd probably call that a day. Uh, one other thing you can do is uh, you get that far snow, maybe make it a little less opaque. And then, of course, um, you can <clears throat> merge all, the, all your other layers while preserving your background. It's saving in the background. Sorry about that slowing down. Uh, and you can see your before and your after. And that's uh, the basics of it. So I would um, first bring your attention to that we just created this snow effect on the primary image that we're working on. But you can uh, eliminate the background image, not even go there. Just start with a new raster layer in gray of an appropriate size to match the images you're going to work on, uh, size and resolution and fill it with gray and go through those steps of uh, f filling with uh, the medium gray, adjusting to add and remove noise uh, with the settings uh, we used as an example. Then go to adjust blur Gaussian. Uh, I think we used uh, something like 67 or something there and then adjust brightness and contrast and there we used uh, as an example 135, 145, 155 for those three uh, for the black, the midtones and the whites <coughs> and then change the blend mode uh, to screen. Uh, the thing to do then would be to save that as an image call it for snow overlay and then every time you want to apply snow to an image you just call up that picture uh, as a new layer on the image you're working on and you wouldn't have to go through all these machinations. Uh, third thing you could do instead is to go through that process and create it as a script and then run the script on each new image and that way if you wanted to apply multiple layers as we did here of near, mid, and far snow you could uh, do that without having to go through this. It would be a flash in the pan and a, a real quick thing. Uh, you could also possibly create a brush to brush over your image to create snow uh, or you could purchase a texture of winter snow effects uh, from online from someone. So th that's my little quick tutorial. Sorry I did not put uh, printed instructions there, but uh, I can put it on the notes below. Please watch these videos in high resolution as you can tolerate. I did record it in high resolution and full screen and hopefully it comes through nicely for you.